Folks were mistrusted as devilish continental things when they started to venture across the channel in the 16th century. It was another hundred years before their use became common in this country, as we were perfectly happy with our own version of the fork, our fingers. Well, I suspect they didn't use fingers with pottage, perhaps used fingers with a bit of bread and all that business. This is great. I suspect I'm not really supposed to enjoy this, you know, it's supposed to be medieval food, but Hey, it must be healthy, there's no fat. We've all got to have a pot of pottage. Fast forward a few hundred years and the Victorians, who else, were enjoying much improved kitchen arrangements. By the middle of the 19th century, most homes had a cast iron cooking range like this. And it gives us more opportunities for cooking different things at once and more control over the dishes we are cooking. We've still got the kettle hanging over the fire and we can have pans hanging over the fire. But because this is cast iron, great conductor of heat, heat moves out through the fire to the edges here, to the hot plate, so we can have pan simmering away there, or we can make that pan boil by pushing the pan over the fire itself. And while all this is going on, we can be brewing a nice pot of tea here, and that's keeping warm all the time. But the new development is the oven. There's the oven, the heat box, really. There's the door. Ah, hot pot, my favorite. Now, around this time, Meat was becoming a lot more affordable, but even so, this is a very cheap cut of meat and it needs long, slow cooking. So a hot pot is an ideal dish to put in a box like this, the oven. The principle is that it's sitting there by the fire for hours and the heat is going all around it, except that most of the heat is on this side. So at regular intervals, say an hour, you've got to rotate the dish so that the heat is distributed evenly. But ranges took a whole day to clean every week and needed to be kept burning constantly. It was tough going. So how did we escape from this life of drudgery? To the life of luxury of the 50s. It was all thanks to the cooker and its new sources of power. The 19th century saw the evolution of the cooker in both its gas and electric forms. Not surprisingly, people were wary of these newfangled forms of power. So they designed the new cookers to look as much like solid fuel ranges as possible, thinking the familiar look would reassure buyers. What is it? It's electric. Oh dear. Even so, some people thought that food cooked with electricity had an indefinable electric -y taste. Some went so far as to worry that the magnetic fields associated with electricity would somehow affect their digestion. They ran cooking demonstrations right across the country in both electric and gas showrooms. And here's a complete mix grill for four people. Even ordinary dishes can be exciting if they're properly cooked. As with all new technologies, things take time to develop. And an electric cooker with many rings was very expensive. So multiple part pans were developed so that you could cook one or two different foodstuffs on one ring. But both electricity and gas cookers still needed lots of attention because temperature control was a hit and miss manual affair. You could get a hottish flame or a medium flame or a small flame, but it was manual and a bit vague. Things improved significantly by the Second World War. But the invention of the regular for gas and the thermostat for electricity brought perfect cooking within reach of everybody and um, I think that's um, probably round about regular six. Let's give it a try. 
but there were ways of improving control. Housewives had a trick of controlling the heat with electric cookers by simply raising the pan away from the electric plate by inserting a coin, a penny or a halfpenny. The development of the cooker is like the development of any kind of technology. The more things develop, the faster it accelerates. So by the 50s, we had pretty much the cookers we have today. And mass production meant that they were affordable. So what did we eat off? Well, plates. And today we're bombarded. We're bombarded with all sorts of literally bombarded with all sorts of plates. But at one time we used to we used to, we used to eat off trees, bits of trees. Who would have thought it, really? Hang on. I'll this is not my day job. Wooden dishes were called treen because they were made from trees. But you had to be careful which tree you used. The favourite was sycamore, which left no taste and has very little toxic tannin. If you had money, you might be eating off pewter plates. By the 15th century, every town had a pewter at making these seemingly more hygienic plates. The mixture of lead and tin would horrify health and safety officers these days. But back then, something else would have killed you off long before the lead had had a chance to go to work. Thank goodness for crockery. In an age of throwaway mass production, it's hard to appreciate the, the, the wealth of effort that's gone into this decoration. This is simply a pot. They're all pots. But when they've been decorated like this, they become jewels, they become precious objects, simply by the amount of labour. And if you look at this, this pot here, this is a still life painting really, it just happens to be on a pot. And uh, only really wealthy people could afford this kind of thing because of the amount of labour that's involved here. Now I've made, not things like, not like this, but I've made pots and I've wanted to reproduce the design over and over. Uh, and I've probably made a little shape like this as a stamp and gone stamp, 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 very quick. But this is actually gold. This is gold paste which had been painted on. So all these little bits of decoration here have all been hand painted and they're all exactly the same. Think how long that takes. It really is a sparkling little jewel. And where the rich go, everyone else wants to follow. So by the late 19th century, even the very poorest members of society were eating from incredibly decorated dishes. It was all made possible by new methods of production. Plates were mass produced by jigging. Not that, this. This is a jigger and that's a jollier. Fun words, aren't they really? But it was a way of getting some speed in production. The plates weren't handmade anymore. They were sort of, well, they were done like this. What you've got to do is get some water on, on the jigger head, which is basically a, a lump of plaster, so that we can get our magically pre-weighed lumps of clay. And this should be exactly the right amount of clay to make the size of plate that I should be making. Now, I've never done this before, so we'll see if it works. So we'll get it on there, and we'll press him down. So I bring this along with my, my leg, and he should. Ah, and there I've got a flat piece of clay I can use. As always in these processes, it looks like that we've got to get a lot of uh, lubrication so things don't stick and get mangled up. We've got another little lever operated by my, my knee and that gets things going. And we need some more water there. Right, away we go. Let's just feel that clay. Now I hope you spotted the, the, the <laughs> deliberate mistake. Maybe I did it too fast before. We'll just do nice and gently. Get some water going. Nice, I can feel the width. A bit of lubrication. Feels right-ish. <laughs> 